<clears throat> What's up folks? So today's video is a video that has been requested since the dawn of time. No, not the dawn of time. Since pretty much the start of my channel. For those of you who've been following my channel for a long time, you know that uh, I pretty much started my channel on this rod right here. Okay, this is a Daiwa Triple B uh, spinning rod. You know, since then I've, I've done a few telescopic rod videos um, here. I did a review on the Daiwa Triple B, uh, I did a review on the Jackson, and my telescopic rod videos have always been the most uh, the most viewed videos, the most popular videos that I put out in my uh, on my channel. And along with that, it's also the videos that get the most comments and requests. Like, can you um, can you do a budget telescopic video? Can you do a, a telescopic specific video? You know, and, and and the requests have been coming in for the last two, even yeah, two plus years. And I've never really gotten down to doing a video on telescopic rods, and I'm sorry for that because, you know, as a kind of like a fishing is my hobby, and YouTube is a um, my channel is an accessory to my fishing. And being my hobby, fishing is a priority, you know, I get new tackle, I want to talk about it, or sometimes I have to choose between sitting down, editing a video, sitting down like this, doing some uh, uh, talking head videos versus fishing. And I'm sure everyone of you can relate. Usually fishing wins that argument. So anyway, yeah, so it's been ta it's taken a really long time for me to uh, put a video like this out and Let's get just just get straight into it. Okay, so of course I have notes uh, as usual, so I don't go off point. So today's video is about telescopic rods. It's not about a specific rod. It's not about uh, anything specific. It's just generic telescopics. It's just a video talking about telescopics. Maybe I'll give some um, some tips, some details, what's available, and stuff like that. All right. So why telescopics? Why do I use telescopics? Well something this small can easily fit into my backpack. Um, when I first started out, my backpack was a lot smaller than the one I use today. Uh, let's see, no, this is not it. Okay, so this is my backpack, all right? This is the one I bring to work. Of course, this uh, is gonna be in the backpack. I needed something that could fit into my bag. Everything needed to fit into my bag. It's not hanging out of the side. It's not sticking out. It had to be in my bag concealed so no one was the wiser. Of course, the first go-to uh, choice that almost anyone uh, would suggest is a multi-section rod. The rod I have here is the four-piece Go Emotion Bait Finesse Rod. Uh, one of the best, in my opinion, one of the best four-piece Bait Finesse rods that you can get. Yeah, anyway, it's not, that's not the point. Not the point of the video. Anyway, I started with this. But the problem is it would still stick out of my bag because take a look at the, the length difference, right? This is a four piece rod. This is a six section telescopic rod. Okay, it's a, this is a six feet nine rod. This is a six feet six rod, all right? But look at the difference when they're folded down, all right? We're talking about at least a three to four inch difference. And that is quite often the difference between fitting in my bag and being able to zip it all the way and fitting it in my bag and having the pieces stick out. The other problem I had uh, with using multi-section rods, I mean, for traveling and for stuff like that, telescopics and multi-section rods, they're all classified as travel rods because they do the same thing. They pack down really small, uh, they allow you to put them in a suitcase and stuff like that, bring them with you wherever you go. But for my use case where I need that portability, I need it to fit in the bag and I need, you know, one other thing matters more to me and that is rigging up time. You don't need to de-rig a telescopic rod. I think I mentioned this in my uh, man cave video. You don't need to de-rig a telescopic rod. You do need to de-rig a multi-section rod. When you put it in your bag, you go out there, you get to your fishing spot, you take everything out, you put each piece in, you line each piece up, you put the reel on, you thread the line through the guides, you tie your snap or you tie your layer on. That entire process can take about 15 minutes, maybe even more. If I have only one and a half, two hours to fish in between uh, work, I don't want to be spending 15 minutes before and then 15 minutes at the end 
of the session rigging and de-rigging my rod. That's just a waste of time. Think about it, one and a half hours to fish. You take off two 15 minutes chunks. I have one hour left. What's the? It's pretty much almost like a what's the point situation. That's basically the differences between telescopic rods and travel rods. Let's talk about um, the stigma that surrounds uh, telescopic rods, the, the cons that us are usually associated with telescopic rods. Okay, so you have generally cr a crappy rod. Most people, uh, most telescopic rods are, are, are really crappy, most, and most folks believe so, and rightfully. The components are bad, the, the blank is crappy, the rod is crappy, it's not sensitive, it's heavy, doesn't look like a real rod, you know, you can spot a telescope, a cheap telescopic rod from a mile away just by looking at the rod. It doesn't look like a real fishing rod. So all of these cons, they, they come over time, they come together and they form this stigma that everyone is so familiar with when it comes to telescopic rods. However, in recent times, well, a lot of this has changed, you know, as you've seen um, the few rods that I've shown so far. So there have been two primary changes in the telescopic rod so-called industry in the last maybe 10 years and that these two things are what I consider to be the milestones of telescopic rods. That's what separates the good rods from the bad rods. The first thing is guide technology. All, right? and all the brands of good telescopic rods out there use the same concept of floating guides. Now why is that so important? As I mentioned earlier in the cons, Telescopic rods traditionally have one guide per section, which means if you have a four, five, six section telescopic rods, you're going to have a four, five, six guide rod, respectively. And four, five, six guides is not enough. It might be six or seven guides might be sufficient for a spinning setup, but for a bait casting setup, there is no way you can get away with that few guides. You know, on a bait casting setup where the guides are on top, the guides literally have to guide the line and keep the line over the blank. And as you load the rod, if the guides are too are spaced too far away, the line is going to want to go in a straight line from one guide to another where your rod is bending this way and the line is just cutting straight through like that. You have a lot of issues that come from that. You have line rub, you have uh, potential, if you use braid, the line can potentially uh, um, affect the blank, uh, shave the blank and, uh, and compromise it. So what companies like Daiwa and all these companies did was they figured out that we need to put more guides on a telescopic rod. We need to figure out how to do that. And the solution, which every company seems to have used or seems to have arrived at, is floating guides. Now what floating guides are is, so you have, uh, just need to get something bigger. All right, so you have a telescopic rod, which traditionally one section, one guide. That is true for the for, for most of these telescopic rods for the first couple of sections. So you've got the first section with a fixed guide on it. You've got the second section with a fixed guide. Then you have the remaining three or four sections, right? And you have what, you, what I call floating guides. And these guides, they, they move up and down, all right? So this solves the problem of having one guide per section because now you can slide the guides down and have more than one guide per section. Right? You can actually double the amount of guides if you really wanted to, but that's not really how it's done. You know, This just allows you to work more guides into one section. So instead of having the, the last four sections with only four guides, now you can have the last four sections with six or seven guides. So that's how these big companies solve the guide problem. Right? That's the first milestone. The second milestone is blank technology. So as I mentioned, Traditionally crappy telescopic rods are made with really cheap blank material. Durable, I mean fiberglass is a durable material, but it's a really crappy material to use. It's not sensitive, it's heavy. So what these big boys did was figure out a way to, to incorporate a proper carbon blank into telescopic rods. Now what's the problem with carbon and telescopic rods? Right? Carbon is brittle. And carbon blanks have very thin walls to cut down on weight. There's no problem when you're talking about a one or a two piece rod or even a, a, a three, four piece rod. You know, they found with, with the ferrules and all the, the, the joint technology that's out today, you know, joining two pieces together 
can pretty much achieve the same strength as a one-piece rod. So they solve that problem when it comes to jointed rods. But when it comes to rods that are telescopic in nature that slide in and out, you have a completely different problem. Because as this section comes out of this section, right, it presses against that tube at the end of the first section. And that causes a lot of outward expansion, a lot of outward force. So they have to find a way to use carbon and reinforce each section to prevent it from splitting. And I think that took a lot of research, uh, you know, for them to figure out, okay, we need to reinforce it internally right here, and then we use uh, guide wrapping and resins on the outside to further reinforce it. So you, there's a lot of things to consider. You want it to be reinforced so it doesn't split. You want it to be measured to spec so that when you pull it out, you tighten it, it doesn't pop off. That's the worst thing that can happen. So the each section has to actually overlap the previous section and the following section. You see, so when these big boys like Daiwa and Abu, when they figured it out, you essentially have a carbon rod. When you fully extend good telescopic rods like this, like the Daiwa Triple B, you have a full-fledged carbon rod with all the good stuff that Daiwa or whatever brand puts into their rod technology. So that's the second milestone. So two milestones you've got, you fix the guide problem, you fix the blank problem, and of course, as with any more expensive branded rod, you fix the component problem as well. So you've got all the Fuji components of the proprietary real seats and stuff like that. And basically what, what all these changes have resulted in is you have telescopic rods that pretty much function at the same level as non-telescopic rods. Uh, for those of you who've been following my channel for a while, I don't think I need to kind of prove that point to you. You see me land anywhere from small to large fish on telescopic rods. You know, I've, I will include in this video, in fact, right now, you're going to see a few clips of me testing out my favorite telescopic rods, my palms and my Daiwa Triple B, my heaviest telescopic rods, in a pond like Baralang with the huge groupers and stuff that they have there. So I'm going to roll these clips right now. My feelings are I'm, I'm probably on the biggest fish of the day with a telescopic rod. Oh, no wonder it fought so hard. It's the uh, yeah, seaweed. So, as you can see, at least with these two rods, they're perfectly durable enough to handle barang fish. You know, I've, I have triple Bs that have been with me for a couple of years now. You know, for those of you who follow me, you know I broke one of my, my initial triple B. I broke it, but not, not because of fighting a fish. It, it, it gave up because I'm six feet two, I'm like 220 pounds and I kind of walked into my own rod. I actually captured that on video, or at least I talked about it in the video. I walked through my own rod and basically snapped it in half. So that's got nothing to do with it being telescopic in nature. And if it was a one or a two piece rod, the exact same thing would have happened. But so some of my, my telescopic rods have been with me for two, more than two years. They've landed countless fish. And what you just saw in the clips was me wanting to kind of 
I'll wrap things up for real. I've landed all the peacock bears and all that stuff on my telescopic rods. I just want to seal the deal just to, to see whether these rods can actually hold their own against decently big fish. You know, or I would, I, what I would consider the extremes that you would encounter in bass tackle. Big groupers like that, in a pond like that, they, they fight harder than any peacock bass or any largemouth bass that you'll be able to encounter. I guarantee it. So if any rod, any bass rod, telescopic or not, if they can handle baralang, if they can handle that kind of stress test, yeah, it can handle whatever you're fishing. Assuming it's bass, peacock bass and stuff. Let's not talk about the monster fish. Obviously, you will need a monster fish rod for that. So now that I've kind of established that, um, that there are telescopic rods out in the market today that are genuinely really good rods, let's talk about what's available. So I've got, of course, the Triple B. And this is hands down my favorite lineup. So let, I'm going to talk about each brand and each lineup um, a little just to give you a bit more information on each given brand of telescopic rod that I have. All right, so the Triple B has, uh, I think, four or five rods in the bait casting side of things and about three to four spinning rods. Okay, the spinning rods go from light class to medium light, I think. Oh, wait, no, they go from ultralight to medium light. There is an ultralight spinning rod that I don't have. For the bait casting setup, it starts with this, which is the 636TMLRB. Now, it's this is ML, it's rated for medium light, but Daiwa considers the six foot three version. There is the six foot six version. Both are rated for medium light, both are rated for six to 14 pounds. However, Daiwa classifies this as a big finesse rod. And this is just, I guess, a finesse rod uh, or a non-finesse, uh, just a light, the, their lightest rod. Whereas this would be the big finesse. When I initially saw these two models, I'm like six three, six six, same rating, same everything questionable whether this would be considered a bait finesse rod. 6 to 14 pounds is really heavy for a bait finesse rod. But once I got it and I paired it with my bait finesse reels, now this is, isn't a bait finesse reel but it's, it is modified so I can cast down to about 2.5 grams on this reel. Uh, I've put of course other reels on this and it can actually cast light stuff pretty well. Well enough for me to say, okay Daiwa, you claim this is a bait finesse rod, I'd give it power finesse. Right? I won't give it a full-fetched bait finesse, but it's finessey enough to handle a really wide range of lures. And that's the 6 foot 3 version. Then you go up to the 6 foot 6 and this is a true blue medium light rod. You know, it, it casts from 5 to 21 grams. Uh, so those of you who are familiar with medium light bass rods, that's what you get. Then it goes to the medium and then it goes to a medium heavy. However, the medium heavy is a special edition rod. All right, you, you, the traditional Daiwa Triple Bs are about 220 to 250 Singapore dollars. The medium heavy model specifically costs about $100 more than that because it's special edition, it comes with a leather bag, it comes with some other stuff from Daiwa. I don't know why they did that. But anyway, I think that rod is out of production. So the next brand I'm gonna talk about is, let's see, which let's talk about Palms. Okay, this will be over real quick because I think Palms has stopped production on their telescopic rods. So I don't think you guys will be able to get your hands on Palms rods anymore. But this is a Palms Mola um, telescopic rod. Now Palms Mola is Palms primary line of bass rods. So this, the Mola lineup is not a telescopic lineup. It's a legitimate bass rod lineup. And the telescopic rods are just part of that entire lineup. Uh, so Palms has three telescopic rods. It has one spinning rod, two bait casting rods. All right, this is the medium heavy. Uh, like like I mentioned just now, uh, Daiwa has a medium heavy rod, but it's either really expensive or I think it's out of production. Unfortunately, I think this is out of production too. But the reason why I got this one was actually because I couldn't get my hands on a medium heavy Daiwa Triple B. I, I needed that one heavier setup that I could um, take with me whenever I was targeting something bigger than peacock bass or more aggressive like maybe snakeheads and stuff I need, or, or when I was fishing in uh, situations that required heavier tackle yet I still need that telescopic rod uh, portability so 
couldn't get the medium heavy Daiwa Triple B, found the palms and never looked back. This rod looks every bit a one or two piece rod as its other brothers and sisters do in the same lineup. So it's a beautifully constructed rod. It is durable as you saw from the clips. Uh, I use my Daiwa Triple B and this palms molar in, uh, in Baralang and they did perfectly fine. So I wish that this is, was still in production because I would recommend this rod alongside the Daiwa Triple B. Unfortunately, I don't think they're in production anymore. So there's the medium heavy, there's the medium, and then there is the spinning version, which is light class, palms molar. So if you guys ever get your hands, can get your hands on one of these rods, if you know, if the, your local tackle shop has one of these hanging around, get it, it's worth the money. Okay, yeah, the one more difference between the Triple B and almost every other rod I'll talk about is Daiwa uses, Daiwa, all of them use floating guides, but each company uses a slightly different method of securing that floating guide. Daiwa uses, attaches their guides to a rubber ring, and that rubber ring you slide it up and down, and the rubber creates friction, right? That holds the guide in place. Um, a company like Palms or Abu for that matter, right? They use carbon tubes. So you've got the blank and you've got a short carbon tube that they wrap the guide on, and that carbon tube is what you slide up and down. It serves its purpose. It's just like the rubber, you know, carbon against carbon has friction as well. So it you know that I don't have a preference one or the other, except for the fact that carbon uh tubes like this make the rod look even more like a uh genuine one or two piece rod, even more indistinguishable. For the Daiwa, if you look closely at each guide, you're gonna be like, wait a minute, that's not a proper guide right there. You know, it's micro guides, it's all this good stuff, but there's no guide wrapping, it's a plastic ring. I'm sorry, it's a rubber ring, you know, versus something that is wrapped like this. All right, each guide is individually wrapped on a carbon tube. So when you actually secure it down, it looks like a real guide attached to the black. So that's the triple B, that's the Mola. All right, the next brand I want to talk about is Abu. And I think, okay, uh, I have Jackson as well. Let's talk about the Jackson first because I've had issues with this rod. So I did a review on this exact rod. This is the Jackson Buster telescopic spinning rod. Okay, and this rod is great. Of all the, the rods that I've dealt with in the telescopic category, the Jackson makes the lightest rods. All right, this rod is so light, not, in, not just in terms of uh, line weight, but in terms of rod weight. This is as light as a really high-end one or two-piece spinning rod. I think it's under 100, I think it's under 95 grams, like 92 grams or something like that. Telescopic rods are always 10 to 15 percent heavier than the equivalent one or two piece rod this one on the other hand is just as light and i really like this rod the problem is i broke two of both my bait casting bastard rods um consecutively i bought i i, I bought the first one i broke it bought the second one and i broke it in the exact same way you know i would be fighting a fish i set the hook and the rod just snaps and I take really good care of my rods. I mean, I have so many rods, I fish so often, and rods rarely break on me. I've had my Kuying Teton for two years. It hasn't broken. So I take really good care of my tackle. So having a rod break like that, two rods, identical rods, consecutively, that's a huge red flag for me. On top of that, I know two other people who have owned Jackson Bastard Telescopic Bait Casting Rods that have broken theirs as well. Now, I haven't heard of issues with the spinning one, so it seems like the spinning one is fine. But the bait casting one, I'd stay away from it because I, two broken by me, two broken by two of my friends, same rod, same model, not really confidence inspiring for Jackson. The next one I'll talk about is Abu. Now, the reason why I explored this particular rod is because, so I'm doing all this telescopic stuff, right? Then I get into bait finesse. And, I'm, and I realized really quickly that although the, the Daiwa Triple B does a decent job, it's not exactly the most finesse rod. And, you know, when you're, using, when you're fishing bait finesse or really ultralight stuff, you want an ultralight rod. It just, it casts better, it, 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 
it doesn't overpower the fish, it's, you know, it, everything is appropriately rated. The problem was, I couldn't find any other telescopic rod that met the specifications of an ultralight telescopic, uh, ultralight bait casting rod. And that is until I went to Japan a couple of years back. Now, when I was in Japan, I went to their, one of their biggest uh, tackle stores in Tokyo and uh, called Joshuya. And in this store, this store is like four, four levels of just pure tackle, right? I go in there and I see this huge glass case with telescopic rods in it, nothing but telescopic rod. And that's where I saw the, I saw the Jackson in there, I saw the Triple B, you know, I saw the Palms. Um, I think Palms is known as Angler's Republic in Japan. And then I see this guy. And I'm like, this is going to be the tiniest telescopic rod I've ever seen. And it's a really unique eye-catching color. It's gold, it's silver, it's green, it's really small, it has nine guides. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, what kind of rod is this? So I asked the guy, you know, hey, can I take a look at it? And he shows it to me. And I realized that it's the Abu Troutin Marquis. So it's the Troutin Marquis is a legitimate, much like the Palms, it's a legitimate lineup of trout rods in Abu Garcia's rod lineup. It's the only telescopic rod that I have found in the last three years of research that I would genuinely classify as a bait finesse rod. Firstly, it's a trout rod. Any trout bait casting rod is probably going to be bait finesse because trout rods are all ultralight or light, anywhere between super ultralight, ultralight and light. So you put a bait casting version of that and you get a bait finesse rod. And bait finesse, as the story goes, started with trout fishing. Daiwa has telescopic trout rods, but they are all spinning rods. Okay, so for those of you who want bait finesse, telescopic, Abu Troutin Marquis. And for those of you who know of any potential other telescopic rods that are in the bait finesse category, I've been searching this for three years and I haven't found them. Please tell me in the comment section below. I'd really appreciate it because I'm always keeping an eye out for new things to explore. So that's the Abu Trouty Marquis. All right, so that pretty much covers almost my entire um, telescopic rod arsenal. Now, the problem is, as over time, as I talk about telescopics and, and stuff, and as I talk about any tackle on my channel, there's, you've got the branded stuff and they are expensive, $250, $210. I think this Abu Chauting Marquis is more than $300. Jackson Bastard, $250, easy, right? And the most common question I get asked when I talk about tackle is, is there a cheaper version? You know, $250 is a bit out of my budget. Is there a cheaper version? version of telescopic rods out there that are worth using. The more these questions popped up, the more curious I got as to whether those rods existed. And that's when I bought this guy, which is the Daiwa Mobile Pack. I believe most of you have seen, you saw my uh, unboxing video of it. So $250 for the Triple B, this was 170 bucks. Slightly cheaper, it falls under the 200 threshold, so it works for some folks. Now does resemble the Triple B. For the most part, it's made by Daiwa, floating guides and all that. However, I would, after using it for a few months, I would not necessarily recommend this rod. Firstly, this is a medium heavy rod. It does not behave like a medium heavy rod. It actually fishes more like a finesse rod. It's really soft. I think I mentioned in the unboxing video that I thought it was a bit um, soft for a medium heavy rod and when I took it out in the water, true enough, I could, this actually served as a, as a pretty good bait finesse rod because it, that's how soft the rod is. I was casting my two, three gram stuff on this rod quite well. Now the problem, so some of you might ask, well, why don't you just use it as a bait finesse rod? Well, the problem with that is with the lower price comes less guides, right? The first section has one guide, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven guides on a bait casting rod. That is almost in the dangerously low category. In fact, this is a seven foot rod. So that's one guide per foot. That's way too few guides 
for any bait casting rod, let alone a bait finesse rod. Bait finesse rods tend to have more guides at the top because the rod is a lot softer, it bends more. So you need more guides to kind of keep the line away from the blank. Seven guides is not enough. So it wouldn't make a good bait finesse rod. It doesn't make a good medium heavy rod. 170 bucks, not worth the money. So that doesn't solve the problem, does it? Still got the question of, is there anything less? The answer was still no, 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 no. And then sometime in November, I think it's November or either that, towards the end of November in 2017, one of you guys commented on a picture that I posted on my DCSG page, Facebook page. And you were like, hey dude, have you, have you ever seen or heard of a rod called the Caskin Black Hawk 2? It's a telescopic rod and, um, you know, he put a link to it. And I was like, no, I've never heard of that rod. And, you know, Casking, I know, is a China brand. I know it's a pretty popular China brand, but there is no way I'm buying a China telescopic rod. I can deal with China everything else because there have been some good ones. But China telescopic rods, never heard of it. Then I take a closer look at that link that he posted and I was like, wait a minute, this rod has 10 guides. It looks like it has nine or 10 guides. So I click on it and this is what I see right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It legitimately has 10 guides. The only way that was possible is if they were using floating guides and it does. So this was mind blowing for me. There's there now, after three years of searching, there now exists a rod, a telescopic rod, that costs 55 bucks, that has floating guides and has 10 guides. So, of course, I bought it. And when I received it, the first thing that I thought was, it's packed, it was packed really nicely. It was very professionally packed. I took it out and like, this rod looks like a really good rod. It's really well made and it kind of looks very similar to the Palms Mola. Look at that. I mean, if I covered this up, could you tell the difference between the two rods? No, they look almost identical, so I don't know. Is this a copy, is this a copy of this? I mean, excluding the cock and the EVA. Did they copy Palms? I, I, I really don't know. I mean, I honestly don't know because this rod has 10 guys. The Palms only has eight. I mean, only has nine, so they, if, they, if this was an outright copy, they would have put exactly the same everything, right? But of course, looks are just one thing, you know? It looks like the real deal. Does it function like the real deal? So I I've, I've taken it out only twice. I have not landed a fish on this rod yet. But just from casting it, it casts fine for two sessions. Don't know how much, <laughs> two sessions is not enough. I haven't landed a fish on the rod. I don't know how durable it is. I've done a load test. You know, just a load test under the loads that I generated just by pulling on it with line, bending it all the way down. It didn't snap or anything. I'm not going to recommend it yet because I'm still really wary about China telescopic rods, but it seems to check all the right boxes. So some of you might be asking, something has got to give, right? I mean, 55 bucks, $210. What's the difference? And it can't just be the cock and versus the EVA. Well, there are a lot of differences. You do make compromises. Firstly, the real seat and guides, well, the components are not Fuji, all right? They are definitely not Fuji. And I don't think Casking makes that claim either. All right, this is just a no brand real seat. It's, an, it's no brand guide. I don't know what material the inserts are. I've got no problem so far. We'll, we'll know soon enough whether uh, durability is an issue. So it doesn't have a butt cap. As you can see, most of the other telescopic rods have a butt cap. Uh, what that achieves, why a butt cap is important for telescopic rods is because of the telescopic construction, if you're caught in the rain or if you drop your rod in the water, sometimes the water would seep through. It would seep through the, the joints and it gets into the rod. With a butt cap, you can just open that cap and drain out the water and let the rod dry. I'm not so sure how this is going to work with this rod because it doesn't have a butt cap. If you drop the rod in water, you get caught in rain. When you keep the rod, you might have to invert it like that and let it dry out. It uses 24 ton carbon. Uh, at least that's what they claim. 
and I believe that 24 ton carbon is a lower modulus carbon than any of the other rods I have here. Maybe it's the same kind of carbon that's used in the mobile pack, you know. Um, either way, the, lo uh, the lower the modulus, uh, the heavier, the less sensitive the rod is. It is a bit more durable because lower modulus carbon is not as brittle as higher modulus carbon, but it's heavier, it's less sensitive. So, you know, weight-wise, Okay, 138 grams. Hundred and twenty-eight. So yeah, the Palms Mola is one of my heaviest telescopic rods. All right, it's 128 grams for a medium heavy rod, which is quite reasonable for a medium heavy rod. This is 138 grams, and this is a medium class rod. Six feet nine, six feet eight. So that's another thing that you sacrifice and it's 10 grams heavier. So it's heavier, non-branded components, no butt cap, EVA grips. Yeah, that's what you sacrifice. And without a legitimate Japanese brand behind the, the, the rod, you get a $55 rod, I guess, right? So don't go out and buy this yet unless you, you really are in a rush. Guys, I have not tested this rod out enough for me to recommend it. But at least what this achieves is it tells us that there might be potentially a budget option for telescopic rods out there. Yeah, that's the Casking Blackhawk 2. Stay tuned, I'll be updating on the performance of this rod as we go along over the next few months. All right, folks, so I think that, that does it uh, for my telescopic rod video. If you're willing to put down that 200 bucks 250 bucks, the Daiwa Triple B and all that, you're gonna be getting a legitimately good rod. You know, that stigma is false when it comes to these rods that I have in front of me. The stigma is false, it doesn't hold true, it's worth exploring. Of course, if you have no issues and you wanna use the multi-section stuff, by all means go ahead. You know, there, there are strong arguments that suggest those make better rods anyway. You know. Be, but if you're in my scenario where you don't like having to rig, take 15 minutes to rig or de-rig a setup and just want to keep it like that, if you're in that category, consider telescopic rods. Consider the rods I've talked about today. I'll put all the less necessary links in the description below. Of course, the links that I personally use to buy them or at the very least, a link to purchase the rods if I can't find the link I bought it from. Um, and yeah, I hope this video helps you guys either make a purchase decision or at least just gives you more info on what's available in the telescopic rod market. Um, sorry again for taking so long to come out with this video. Um, if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give me a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel, share my videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Tight lines, guys.